My name is Jen Gregoritis, and I am so proud to be the mayor of this incredible community. Governor Healy, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, cabinet secretaries, legislators, my fellow Melrose officials, and my fellow mayors and municipal leaders, thank you all for joining us today to celebrate the signing of this bill, which will deliver essential Chapter 90 funding to all 351 cities and towns across Massachusetts. Chapter 90 is an indispensable resources, resource for cities like Melrose. It's not only used to build and repair city-owned roads and bridges or to fill potholes, though I know we can all agree that's very important, but also to procure, design, and install traffic lights, street lighting, sidewalks, crosswalks, bicycle lanes, and pedestrian accessibility improvements. Every resident benefits from these investments, as do our local businesses and arts and culture community. In recent years, Melrose has leveraged Chapter 90 funds beyond paving alone to improve our neighborhoods functionally and aesthetically. We've closed sidewalk network gaps, adding sidewalks on streets like Altamont Ave, Spear Street, and Hancock Street. We've modified intersections to calm traffic on Poplar Street, Emerson Street, and Warwick Road, to name a few. We've supplemented Complete Streets funds to improve traffic safety and pedestrian access in the Hoover School neighborhood and on Howard Street at Green, Clifford, and Elm Streets. We have used chapter, chapter 90 money to fix drains under the streets we are going to pave and to plant trees and paint bike infrastructure on those streets once paving has been completed. These projects matter to our community. But we have a long way to go, as evidenced by the recent high school civics projects completed this year by 14 students who are here today. These two groups of high schoolers completed their project focused on exactly the reason we're gathering here today. Filling potholes and improving local roads and transportation matters to communities. The additional Chapter 90 funding in the bill being signed this morning will make a huge difference for cities and towns like Melrose and will enable us to continue to pursue proactive and high impact improvements to local roads and routes. We want to thank the members of the state legislature for their timely passage of this legislation to be signed this morning. Our state legislators, Rep. Kate Lipper Garabedian and Senator Jason Lewis, are key partners connecting town and city halls with state agencies such as MassDOT. As a mayor, I know that the city of Melrose has steadfast partners and friends in the Healy Driscoll administration. To borrow a turn of phrase from our Lieutenant Governor, I am also a member of the Get Stuff Done branch of government. <laughs> And today we're joined by two of the best leaders in that school of thought. Today, as we look forward to the signing of this legislation, it's my great pleasure and privilege to introduce the 73rd Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Governor Maura Healy. Thank you so much, Mayor Gregoritis. It's so Great to be here in Melrose. Um, thank you to members of the city council who are joining us and from so many departments in the city. Thank you. Um, great to begin my day with so many wonderful and dedicated public uh, servants, including elected and um, and otherwise um, working, working for public government. Um, I'm also really thrilled to be joined by our Lieutenant Governor, who you'll hear from shortly, and our Secretary of Administration and Finance, Matt Gorkowitz, and our Secretary of Transportation, Monica tibbetts nutt From the legislature, as the mayor noted, it is all about partnership, and our administration, our team, is grateful to our colleagues in the legislature, uh, certainly for this funding, um, but for your work on so many fronts to make life better for residents and folks across the state. So to Senator Lewis and Rep. Lipper-Garabedian, Senator Crichton, who is also the chair of the Transportation Committee, we really thank you for your continued work and, uh, and results. Also uh, joining us today are so many local officials. We're thrilled to see all of you, um, uh, and we thank you for being here. We also um, are here to, and I'm going to leave that to you. You're, you're the mayor. You're on the mayor, right? You're gonna, you're, there, there's nobody who can do a better job with this than, uh, <laughs> than our Lieutenant Governor, Kim Driscoll, um, because I want to make sure we include everybody. Um, we're here today to announce $375 million in infrastructure investments in cities and towns across the state. 
We just heard, we know that Melrose is putting these funds to great use here on Main Street in this historic downtown, a walkable and drivable hub for small businesses and community life. And I want to shout out and thank you students for A, civic engagement, you know, and B, helping inform what we in government should be doing to make life better for all of you. So thanks for being here. I don't know if you need a note to get back to school, <laughs> but we'll take care of that. Um, in cities and towns across our state, this is funding for projects that residents and their elected officials have deemed critical for their community's quality of life. We're talking about bridges and roads, sidewalks, public transit, electric vehicle access, and so much more. These investments are made possible by strong collaborative partnerships across the legislative and executive branches working with our stellar local officials. We're grateful to the legislature for moving so quickly on this year's Chapter 90 bill. In fact, earlier, I'm told, than any other year since 2016. So thank you so many much. I know our local officials really, really appreciate that as well. So $200 million in, in Chapter 90 investment with an additional $175 million for infrastructure grants. That includes continuing our mileage-based increase in support of our rural communities, which tend to, having grown up in one, have longer roads and fewer resources to maintain them. Regional equity continues to be a priority for our administration. It also includes innovative programs that will help us advance our climate goals. This includes electric vehicles in our regional transit authorities, small bridges, which are charming and often in need of a lot of work because they are uh, oftentimes so historic and also important to local communities. Our dedicated bus infrastructure and access to transit stations. It's important for advancing our housing goals as well. And it's great to see a bus drive by, right? That's what we're talking about. Our goals for making Massachusetts more affordable, more competitive, more equitable. It depends on local action, it depends on partnership, and it depends on making sure that we provide the funding and the investments that our communities need. It is now my pleasure to introduce someone I am privileged to work with, learn from every single day, and I know uh, how much our local officials in cities and towns across this great state appreciate all that she continues to do and partner on. So I want to introduce our terrific Lieutenant Governor, Kim Driscoll. We are here to talk about the love language of local government, which consists of uh, fixing potholes, complete streets, roads, culverts, bridges, you name it. And we're joined by a number of local officials who are here. Town manager from Winthrop, Tony Marino. Uh, city manager from Watertown, George Proakis. I saw uh, Braintree Mayor, Aaron Joyce. Medford Mayor, Brianna Lowen Cohn. Uh, Revere Mayor Patrick Keefe, we've talked to Jen already, former um, town manager in Arlington and MMA director Adam Chapdelaine. Um, who am I missing? Anybody else? We've got a number of city councilors with us as well. Thank you for those who are in legislative government at the local level. All of this works hand in glove. Uh, and thank you to everyone from Melrose. Uh, we enjoy your downtown frequently in my family. Uh, we share a Turner's uh, in Salem and in Melrose, so that always feels like a little bit of home. And as, as, uh, as many of you know, as a former mayor, this really is the, some of the most important resources we have because we know that when we have crumbling infrastructure and we have deferred maintenance, it really has impacts from um, the quality of life where people are living, but also to saving lives. Like It's important that roads and bridges and sidewalks, that they're working in a way that support all of the other investments that we're making in our communities. And as all of you know, investing in infrastructure is oftentimes at the top of that list. Nearly 400-year-old cities and towns, we've got roads that were built for horse and buggy, and we're trying to make it all work together now in a way that we're smarter. And uh, as, from our perspective as a state agency, we really want to make sure we're finding ways to invest with all of you in these important resources. You know, the majority of roads throughout the Commonwealth are local roads, but I want to make sure we also uh, pay tribute to MassDOT Director Jonathan Gulliver, who's responsible for all the state roads we drive on and knows the importance of these resources, both for safety and for economic opportunity. We know that when we invest in infrastructure, we're helping create a thriving environment for our small businesses. And when we have thriving small businesses, that can create local revenue that can help us invest back into those places that people enjoy. It's a beautiful cycle. And for us, these investments really can demonstrate what transportation infrastructure really means when you do it right. And that means better quality of life, 
better safety for all of our communities. It means environmental protection, advancing climate go goals. It means good jobs and economic development. It's how we get our kids to school. It's how we enjoy the beautiful communities we're all fortunate enough to live in and represent. And as the governor said, we are doubling down on regional equity so that every community can get what it needs what it needs. That's why we're pleased as we're enacting this legislation today and unlocking these resources that will be invest in, in, invested in communities across Massachusetts. We're trying to do it with an eye that meets those additional needs. It is more expensive to pave than it was a few years ago. Inflation and those things have impacts. So these additional dollars we know can help make up for some of those opportunities to spread the dollars as well as we can. We're going to continue to work closely with both our local legislative partners and our state legislative partners. We can't do this work without having the investments to support strong, healthy, and vibrant communities. We all understand these needs in state government, and it's my, uh, and my pleasure to introduce our Secretary of Transportation, who spent, we spend a lot of time talking about complete streets and rail trails and how we can support the work you're doing on the ground. Our Secretary of Transportation, Monica tibbets nutt Thank you, Lieutenant Governor, and I just want to say a huge thank you to the Governor, Lieutenant Governor, and Legislature for making this announcement possible today. At the most fundamental level, MassDOT is moving people between where they live and where they want to be. We all know that funding means so much for the cities and towns that look forward to this funding to help make the critical improvements to the roads, bridges, and multimodal infrastructure. This happens on the ground in cities and towns across the state. We can't do what we want to do and what needs to be done without the partnerships of these communities. That is the core part of what makes all of us successful, partnerships. For our towns and cities, this sometimes can be as simple as Chapter 90 funds. Money going straight to the communities allows them to prioritize the transportation projects that they know they need. We know what we want to do and what we want to see to move the residents of the Commonwealth, but they know what their communities need to make them the best possible places to live. This Chapter 90 program allows municipalities to evaluate their unique transportation needs and goals and to make sure that those dollars go where they need to be. MassDOT looks forward to working with all of the cities and towns in the coming months to help make these investments possible. And as you can see today, this is incredibly important to these communities. We are all here because this is a very early signing of the Chapter 90 funds. And I have to say, this administration has done so much to help MassDOT, but especially to help the communities to continue to do the amazing work they're doing. So I just want to say thank you to the administration, thank you to the legislature and our local officials. And now I want to hand it over to the governor for the signing. Thank you, Secretary. Let's uh, we'll go make this official. Go spend some money. Thank <laughs> you. 